Okay, so in this episode, we're going to talk about how to actually upload a website so we can see it online. And before we talk about how to actually upload the site, I'd like to talk to you guys about what is required in order for you to actually upload the website. So if you take a look at the website we're going to upload, you guys can see that this is the template we've been building in the past many episodes. And even though it does not look very pretty, I think this is a good example to show you guys how to upload a website. So right now, this website you guys can see here is actually sitting on my desktop. It's not online. It's actually sitting on my desktop on my computer. In order to get it online, we're going to need a couple of different things. The first thing we need is a domain name. And a domain name is essentially what you type into the URL in order to show something. So if you type facebook.com or youtube.com, that is a domain name. Now, the second thing we need is something called an FTP platform or an FTP software, which you use to actually upload your files to your domain name. Now, the first thing we're going to do is we're actually going to go to a hosting company where you can buy a domain name. And the one I recommend is the one called one.com. Now, there's a lot of hosting companies out there and some are better than others. Some are really bad. Some are really good. Now, my favorite hosting company is the one called one.com that you guys can see right here. And the reason I like this company is because it's both simple to use one.com and they have really good customer service. Now, if you do actually sign up to a hosting company and you use one.com, I highly recommend you guys click the link in my description of this video, because if you do go to one.com using that link I have in the description and sign up, you guys are going to get three gigabyte extra space for free on your server. Because once you do sign up, you can choose between 15 gigabyte, 30 gigabyte, 60, 120, all the way to two terabyte. And if you do actually use my link, you're going to get three gigabyte extra for free, which means that if you sign up for 15 gigabyte, you're going to get 18 gigabyte, which is good. So once we're in here, um, in order to actually buy a domain name, you're going to have to go up into the search field up here, type in something. For example, if I type in MM Toots, it's going to give me different options here. If I want .dk, .one, .com, .org. Now, .dk is already taken because that's my domain name. Uh, if I were to type in something else like MM Toots ASD, you can see that we have all of these available to us. So we can just choose one. So if I choose the one called .com, it's going to take me to another page where I can actually buy this domain. Now, buying a domain is going to cost quite a bit more the first time you buy it. And then from there on out, when you've actually bought it, then it's going to cost you roughly, I think, $10, maybe a little bit less than that a month to actually keep the domain. So right now you're actually paying uh, for 12 months and you're paying for setting up the, the website for the first time. So for the whole year, it's going to be 164 corner in my case, which is about 200 something dollars, I believe. No, no, not 200. That's way too much. Uh, it's about 40 something dollars. Um, so it, it does cost quite a bit to set it up the first time. Now, once you've actually bought the domain and you registered it down here and you're done, then you're going to have to wait till you receive an email. Now, there's three emails that I should point out. You're going to get one email, which is a um, factura, you know, like that shows you what you bought. The second email shows you your login information for the control panel up here. So if I do actually go to my control panel and log in, you guys can see I did actually blur out my information because I don't want you guys to see it. If I do actually log in up here, I am going to get to my control panel where I can control all the different things about my domain that I want to control. Now, I'm also going to blur out some stuff in here because I don't want you guys to see it. Um, but in here, you do actually get quite a few things that you can choose. Now, the one I want you guys to pay attention to is the one called SSH and FTP, which is a menu we have down here. If you click it, it's going to tell you that you need to set a password for your FTP if it's your first time, go ahead and do that. And then just go ahead and stay in here for now. Now, the last email you're going to receive is an email that's going to tell you to go to a Hostmaster website. I don't know if it's called Hostmaster in other countries, but here in Denmark, we have a company called DK Hostmaster, which takes care of registering all domains inside Denmark. So if you're in the US right now, you're going to get an email saying you have to go to another kind of company and register your domain name. So if I go to my DK Hostmaster site, and of course, like I said, this is if you live in Denmark, this is how it's going to look like. Uh, you're going to get an email that tells you to go here, which has a user ID and a 
number you need to use to actually log in. And logging in, you're going to have to then register your domain name. You won't actually see your website till you actually register it, so it's important you do this once you get the email. Once you've done that, we can actually get started on uploading the site. I should also mention that it takes a couple of hours for your website to actually be visible. So if you did actually go in and register your domain name, you uploaded your website to your domain and all that good stuff, and you still can't see it, you should wait a couple of hours before you can actually see it. Now, going back to my one.com, uh, you can see we did actually go into the FTP information in here. And the FTP information you're going to need once we download this program called FileZilla. This is a FTP platform which is not something you have to have. You can actually go into your dashboard inside your one.com and upload your website straight away in there. But it's much more annoying and complicated than just downloading FileZilla and setting it up really quickly. So once you download the FileZilla, you're going to get this program which is going to tell you a lot of different, well, there's a lot of different windows in here and might be overwhelming to start with. But once you have this open, you can go to File, Site Manager, and in here, you can create a new site down in the bottom here and just kind of type in the name of your website or at least your domain name. Once you created your new site, you're going to go over to the right side and fill in the information we found from our one.com FTP information. So there's a couple of things you need to pay attention to. We need the host, we need the port, we need the username for logging in, and need the password. So going back to one.com, you can actually see that right now, mine says my host is this right here. It says my username is this right here. It says my port is down here. And then the password is what you chose when you did actually go in here the first time and chose a password. Now, of course, I have blurred some stuff out for you guys here because I don't want you guys to go into my website. Um, but once you have this information, you're going to go ahead and put your host up here. You're going to put your port over here. You're going to set your username. Oh, I need to mention, if your login type is set to anonymous, you need to choose normal. Then choose your username or like put it in here. And then choose your password and put it in here. And then connect. And once you connect it, it's actually going to give you this little window down here with some stuff in it. If it's your first time uploading to your new domain, you're going to have some default files in here, which you can just go ahead and, well, I shouldn't tell you guys to just delete everything because depending on the hosting company, if you use one.com, your folder is going to have some files in it, like an index file and that kind of thing. And you can just go ahead and delete everything. If you're choosing another hosting company, you're most likely going to have some folders in here. Like I do have right here. This is actually, I just logged into my FTP from another hosting company I have called domain direct so i'm actually not showing you guys how to upload to one.com right now well you need to type in the information i just told you and then you can do it but once i actually upload to show you guys that we can get this online i'm going to be using domain direct which is a not as good company for hosting as the one.com one um but i have all my ftp information up here and i did actually choose it i locked into my domain that i got from domain direct which is called dnportfolio.dk and once I accessed my domain, I do actually get some folders. And you guys, depending on the hosting company you sign into, will maybe have these folders as well or something different, but you will have some folders. So you need to look into these folders and see which one of them carries the information of the website that you're seeing right now. When you do register a website the first time and you type in to the URL address, the website, uh, it's going to give you some welcome to one.com message or something. And that's actually the files that are going to be in inside your folder in here as a default. So look into these folders, see if you can find those files. And then, then you'll know that this is where you need to upload your root folder to. If you're using one.com, you just need to upload your root folder, or at least the stuff inside your root folder, directly to the directory here. So because my hosting company here, Domain Direct, tells me I need to go into my HTTP docs folder to upload. I'm going to go into this folder. In here, I'm going to go ahead and take my root folder. And I'm going to go ahead and take all the files we have in here and paste it in here. So right now I'm uploading it, as you guys can see. And I do have one heavy file down here, which I don't know what is. It might be a video. So once I do actually have all this uploaded, I can go to my URL and actually type in dnportfolio.dk. 
and see my website. So now it's actually online. This is how you upload a website and it's actually very, well, the first time it might be a little bit complicated, but once you've done it once, it's very simple to do. And you guys might be asking some questions about, you know, you might not be able to find some information inside your one.com dashboard, but I need to mention that all hosting companies are different. So if you want to find your FTP information, some companies like one.com uh, puts it out really easily for you to just find it. And some companies make it really difficult for you to find it. If you can't find it, go ahead and contact them and ask them for it and they'll send it to you. Um, but this is essentially how you upload a website. So I hope you guys enjoyed this episode and I'll see you guys next time.